Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. I'm Crotta Lightblade, and I'll be your host for this particular apocalypse. Those of you who watched the previous videos will recall that we are currently located in Asphodel County, in an unspecified part of New England, and we are currently inhabiting one Jimmy Gerhardt, a none too bright fellow who nonetheless does quite well for himself out in the woods. We'll pick up right where we left off last time, right at the beginning. It was just yesterday that it all happened. The end came suddenly, and things have happened so fast that Jimmy didn't even have the time to get all the way out of town. Let's check in our new friend, and see how he's doing. Now, first thing you'll notice is that this is what you might call a bit old school with the graphics, or rather, the lack thereof. This is called ASCII art. That's A-S-C-I-I. It is a very old way of representing graphical text through, well, text graphics. You'll notice that there are several symbols all over the screen. The one in the center is our little at symbol there. That is Jimmy Gerhardt. All of the other symbols represent other things in the world. The lines represent walls. The pound symbols currently represent benches or counters. The little sixes are computers. The blue one is functioning. The grayed out one is broken. The uh, light blue uh, quotation marks there, those are windows. And the plus signs are doors. The greater than symbol there is a set of stairs that go down into the basement. You will also notice that this screen will move when I start to hit buttons. That is because, well, we're moving and the screen always remains centered on our dear friend Jimmy. All of our character information is at the right side of the screen. That includes our health of all of our various body parts, what things are in what directions, the little mini-map at the upper right center of the screen, <coughs> what weapon we are currently using. It says fists, that is right, be right beneath power, we will be changing that shortly. It also tells us that we are currently in an evacuation shelter and that the weather is sunny, 66 degrees Fahrenheit. Sound 6 means that there is a... S we are creating some sound, it looks like. I'm not sure where that's coming from, but we'll find out. Now, first things first, let's take a look at where we are. This, my friends, is our over map. This tells us that we, again, are the at symbol in the center, located at an evacuation shelter just from just south from our first town. And it looks like in the far distance, you can see that there's another town to our south. There are a large amount of woods off to our west and to our east. There is a cave. Now, if you were an outdoorsy sort, I'm certain that your first instinct would be to run straight for the woods, too. Well, very shortly here, that is exactly what Jimmy will be doing. But first, Jimmy has decided that we're going to take a look downstairs. It's going to be dark down there, but Jimmy has a few things that might help. First, a combat knife. If you look at the description of our combat knife, it gives us a series of statistics, including how much damage it does, what kind of a two-hit bonus it has, how fast it attacks, that sort of thing. One important thing to note here is that it says it has a cutting quality of one. That is very important, because that will allow us to cut things up whenever we choose to do so. This is a military combat knife designed for close quarters conflict. It is light and extremely sharp. It could be deadly in the right hands. It could be used to butcher corpses. That will be very useful when we start to hunt. I'm going to press our little W button and wield the combat knife. That is now our official weapon. I'm going to go back to our inventory. You'll notice we have a flashlight, a lighter, a plastic canteen, which is sadly currently empty, and a long rope. What we're going to do is we're going to go downstairs and see whether or not somebody might have left us some food or water down there. Now, traveling through here, you'll notice that we have a sort of dynamic view. We can see out of the windows, but the blacked out areas of the screen are parts of the screen that we cannot currently see from our current position. This is very, very useful when you're looking for, well, anything, really. It lets you know what you can and cannot see, and generally, if you can't see it, it probably can't see you. 
Now we're going to go downstairs. You'll notice that our view is much more restricted down here. That's because it's dark. <coughs> now you'll notice we can see out two squares in every direction before we have gray pound symbols everywhere. That is darkness. We cannot see past that. However, normal characters can only see one squ square in every direction. We can see two because we have high night vision. Now I'm opening this door. I'm moving into the darkness. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on our flashlight. Look at that. Activate flashlight. And look at that. We have objects. You'll notice that we have two question mark symbols and two brackets. Those are items lying on the floor. We're going to approach them and take a look at what they might be. Examine this. Winter gloves. Those might turn out to be useful. We'll pick those up. Let's see, what is this? A sweatshirt. Again, it could turn out to be useful later. The big book of first aid. Well, Jimmy can't read, but he can always use fire, you know, fire starting materials, right? And another big book of first aid. This one we'll leave here. We only need one book to start a fire later. Closing this door back up. We're not barbarians, after all. Turning our flashlight back off. Now, you may notice, if you were observant, that our flashlight started at 100 and is now at 98. That is its battery power. Over time, using that battery power will drain the batteries. We'll have to find more batteries to replace it later. Now we're going to move out of the evac shelter. I considered, at first, going for that cave, but I think we are better off traveling out towards the woods. Now, you notice that we are currently surrounded by all sorts of shrubbery. The little asterisks that you'll see scattered about, those are rocks. That little F over there, however, that is something a little bit more useful. You'll notice that there are messages scrolling up on the right side of the screen. The sunlight's glare makes it hard to see. Look at that. A mutated poppy flower. I don't think we want to touch that, but those can be useful later. Now then, we're going to move out into the woods. First thing, though, we're going to grab this rock. We're going to grab this rock. Then we're going to move back to the evacuation shelter. Let's see here. Now then, I I'm going to smash this window in. Now then, use the construction menu. This normally tells us what things we can build. Right now we're just using it to clean the broken window out so that when I crawl through it I don't hurt myself. Because there are all sorts of broken glass after all. In fact, some of that glass is right here on the floor. We're going to be taking a sheet, a heavy stick, and a long string, which does in fact overload us. But that's alright, because now we have construction menu, or a crafting menu, rather. We are going to look through this and see if there's anything we can build. We have various options from hunt, from weapons, ammo, and food, chemicals, electronics, armor, and other. Other is various tools of all sorts. Now let's look through. We don't need a cudgel or a pointy stick. We already have a pretty good weapon. Ammo. I am going to craft a set of pebbles because, well, pebbles are useful. But actually, think about it. No, no, the darts are fine. We're going to use pebbles for now, because that will allow us to build a slingshot later and use it. Now then, what else can we make? In fact, do we have... No, sadly, we do not know how to build a slingshot. But that's alright. <coughs> Let's see, we can't make any sort of food, chemicals, electronics, armor. We can make a makeshift sling. That's the sort of sling that you put a broken arm in, not a slingshot, sadly. An other, a digging stick. With this, we could, in fact, dig small holes and pits. We're not going to be doing this right now. So, we don't really have much we can build, so I'm afraid we're going to have to drop some things. I'm going to drop these glass shards. We don't need those right now. Now, we're going to move back out into the woods. Now, that sheet I took with me. You may be wondering why a window has a sheet. Well, because it was the curtains, of course. We can use those later to cut them apart, or to make all sorts of things out of them. Oh, well, look at this. What is this down here? I'm going to use my examine button. Look down towards here to see what these little things are here. Oh, my. 
Those are webs. That means there's a spider nearby. A particularly large and unpleasant spider, by the looks of it. And up here you'll see an M. That is a moose. Moose are, well, in ill-tempered and dangerous. We're going to be trying to avoid him for the moment. We don't quite have the skills to take him out. Ooh. Now you'll see this is the first time my safe mode has triggered. Monster spotted. Safe mode is on. I have to turn safe mode off to be able to move around, or I can use my apostrophe button to ignore the monster, which is what we're going to do right now. That spider is probably not going to chase us, because he is in his webs. Oh, and look at that. We have another... Uh, I'm going to turn safe mode off for now, because we're going to be getting a lot of triggers from those spiders, and, well, we're not really worried about the spiders right now. Now, all of these ones and sevens, those are shrubs and young trees that, uh, basically tell me that how, you know, that something is in my way. This here, however, is blackberries. Those are going to be useful, and I'm going to go ahead and eat those immediately. That way, with any luck, we will be able to, we'll be able to stave off hunger for just a little bit longer. Which is going to be an important thing. Oh, it looks like these woods were not very thick. Let's check our map again. Okay, yes, they do still go on for quite a ways. And up here, I thought I saw what might be more berries. Is that, in fact, going to be more berries? If so, I will be eating those immediately as well. Oh, it's an apple. Why don't you look at that? Apple! And that means, oh, look at that, a bright seven instead of a dull seven. That is an apple tree. We can pick that apple tree and get a bunch of apples. What shall we drop? Let's... How about this? Why don't we wear our winter gloves for now? Not that it is in fact winter, but it gets them all, it gets them out of our pack for the moment. Pick up all of the apples and then drop our sweatshirt. I think we have enough clothes for now. And besides, unfortunately, you can't cut apart sweatshirts. That's too bad, but you can't. Now you'll notice that we have gone from being comfortable to being warm. Now, there aren't a whole lot of penalties to associated with being just slightly warm. And in fact, I'll show you. This here is our character sheet. This is what our character looks like in terms of our statistics. You'll notice that we have a little bit of construction there. That's from cleaning out the window. You'll also notice that we have a slight penalty to speed due to being hot. It's very slight. I'm not worried about it yet. But we may have cause to worry about that later. As for now, you'll also just notice that it has all of the stats we chose in the last video. You can look over those if you'd like. I'm just going to keep moving on. Now, this area here, surrounded by woods. Ooh, what is this down here? A crater. That might be a little bit dangerous. So we're going to continue moving on into the woods. Ooh, and what is that seven there? Let's see what that's, this tells us it is. An apple, okay. So that's probably another apple tree. This looks like it might actually be a decent place to set up a camp. The problem is, we're going to have trouble with figuring... Ooh, those question marks up in the corner mean I am hearing something right now. and I don't know what it is because I can't see it. And it could be dangerous, so I am going to try and check it out just in case. No, nope, I don't see anything here. Just a squirrel. Okay. We might be hunting those later. Ooh, more webs. That means more spiders. Okay, I'm going to move... Oh, more spiders. I'm going to move north from here. And we're going to start to consider where exactly we might set up a temporary camp. Now, unfortunately, we do not have the skills or materials to build what I would really like to build, which would be some sort of a tent, I don't believe. Now, but what we can do, let's see... Materials... No, we don't need any of that. Though the barbed wire might be useful later. Uh, let's see, containers, we already have something there. No, sadly we don't have anything to build there. I may be cutting some of this out later, obviously. 
Let's see. Uh, you know what? No, we don't have anything. Well, we actually we do have something to put that in. So I'm going to make some apple cider really quickly here. It just basically involves pressing a rock, you know, pressing a bunch of apples with a rock. So, and that. Oh, oh! I failed to make the apple cider, and I wasted some materials. That means we wasted some of our apples. We still have one apple, so we're still okay for now. But that could have gone better. However, you will also notice that that trained our cooking skill a slight bit. So with any luck, we will do better in our next attempt. And in fact, I'm going to get some blueberries. Look at that. Ooh, and this here looks like somebody set up some items in traps. If you recall, we have a few points in the trapping skill, so I feel vaguely confident in actually trying to pull apart some of these traps. So, I'm going to disarm this bear trap. Yes, disarmed it without killing myself. Excellent. Now it dropped a bear trap for us here that we could use. Now I'm going to disarm this bear trap. Disarm this spiked board. Disarm this spiked board. I'm basically going to disarm all of these because if I do this correctly, it will both save us some points in our... Oop, that one, unfortunately hurt us because we failed to disarm the trap properly. It ended up closing on my foot, tearing my boxer shorts. That's not really good. I'm not sure why it tore my boxer shorts and not the pants I was wearing, but let's not question it too strongly. This is a landmine. I am not touching that because that might hurt a lot. Now, a crossbow trap. Also not touching that because, again, that might hurt a lot. But are there any items here? I will use this screen. This will tell me if there are items laying around. There are not. So these traps are mostly just here to ensure that no one gets close to whatever they're protecting, which doesn't seem to be much. Ooh, that again, I hurt myself with another trap. Still, our trapping skill is going up slightly because I'm trying to disarm those traps. So if we can find relatively safe traps to disarm, like the bear traps, which even if they do hurt us, don't hurt us badly, well, then we'd be better off. I'm going to eat one of our apples. We're getting a bit hungry. We, get, we may recall we have a high metabolism, which is not great for us. It's going to mean that we're going to have a much harder time with food. And I'm going to buy this, I'm going to take this mushroom here, not buy. I wanted to buy it from. What am I thinking? This heavy stick, however, I am going to pick it up. I'm going to drop our combat knife for a second. <clears throat> because with this heavy stick, this heavy stick, I will turn into a digging stick. I'll use the one that's in my hands. And then I will pick up. Oops. Uh, let's see. Now I'm wielding a digging stick. I will grab my combat knife again. In fact, I will wield a heavy stick for now because it's bigger than the. Oh, wow. Apparently the digging stick is somehow larger than the heavy stick. I'm not sure how that works, but we're not going to question it right now. Instead, we're going to drop our glass shards, at least one of them, and in fact, we're going to drop the other one here. We don't need the glass shards, and we're going to move on. Now, what I would really like, obviously, is an axe. If I had an axe, I could start to build a house. It wouldn't be a great house because I don't have a shovel to dig a foundation with, but at some point we will hopefully discover something out in these woods. Ooh, look at that, a cave. Well, we're going to be exploring that cave, aren't we? This may be a, what you might call, a very short trip for poor Jimmy. He's already in quite a bit of pain there from having his leg nearly torn off by a bear trap. And now he's exploring a random cave in the woods. But what Jimmy feels at the moment is that maybe, just maybe, there may be some sort of supplies in that cave. Ooh, and that cave is close to another town, so we may actually go raiding into the town and see what we can see, see, see. And there is our cave in the distance there. It's hard to see through all the trees, but I assure you it is there. And we are going to approach this cave determine what might be hiding within it. Can't get to it from the south? Oh, there. 
Now then, descend into the depths. 